What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of Five Nights at Fazgoo's. Now, before we begin this video, I do want to say that the Fazbear Frights are totally my favourite part of the, of the FNAF universe currently. I really don't want them to stop because I love looking at each story and working out how it fits and functions in the universe. I've heard people say that much like how Underscore used to be a FNAF AR theorist YouTuber, I'm the Fazbear Frights theorist. And honestly, I'll take it. But I don't like to think of myself as a hardcore theorist, rather a presenter of the evidence, the facts, and ideas. Now just remember that I do love these books uh, because there's one thing in them that I think people aren't too fond of. And that's the idea of the random introduction of Fazgu. As it actually came back in the Puppet Carver, we're actually me talking a little bit about what it really is and why it's important to the FNAF lore. Speaking of FNAF lore, I've actually done a similar video to this about Agony that you can go and check out right now and I'm planning on making more like this in the future. Tell me guys what you want to see on this channel. And also subscribe so that you see when I upload it. Uh, I've got some very exciting stuff coming up very soon so uh, you won't want to miss out on it. Of course, I'm very very close now to 10,000 subscribers and I would love for you to join me on the ride. Anyway, thank you all and let's continue with the video. In order to talk about Fazgu, I'm going to need to get everybody up to speed on the story he told me everything from the cliffs. So this story is about Chris and no, his last name isn't Afton. So Chris wants to be popular and joins the science club because everybody knows that being a science nerd in school gets you popular. <laughs> Every year the science teacher Dr Little does an experiment with the students after school, so Chris decides to join in this year. Now the experiment involves a Freddy Fazbear Mad Scientist kit with some Fazgoo in it, uh, and the students have to remove one of their teeth <laughs> and drop it into the goo, plop, and stick their index finger in the goo. I don't know why it made that sound. Basically this is so that it feeds off the blood cells in your finger and then I don't know. <laughs> Supposedly, it would create a new being that tells the students something that they will never forget. Now, something I want to point out here is this 100% sounds like a cult. <laughs> and I think if something bad were to happen, then the man responsible for all of this would be Dr. Little as the cult leader. Uh, so I would remember all of that if I were you. Now, Chris understandably does not want to pull out one of his teeth. So he instead uses a baby tooth that he kept since he when, since it fell out when he was younger. All of the students are doing their experiments in their cubicles one by one coming out uh, to the teacher and saying he told me everything or she told me everything. Then they're dismissed. Uh, but Chris is there much longer than everybody else. In fact, he's the last student there. Now my guess is because this is because he used a baby tooth instead of an actual uh, fresh tooth from his mouth. Uh, that sounds weird to say. It was a very odd detail when I when I read it at first, but I think that's the reason it was added, so that he could be the last student uh, to leave. Um, so maybe it took longer for the goo to create a connection with the older two. I, I don't know. I have no idea. He was actually there for so long, he took naps. And when he woke up, he saw an identical being uh, to himself, but made of Fazgoo. Their heartbeats matched and they were both connected by their index fingers, like, like just like this. Chris actually tried to cut the tendrils between them, but he couldn't do so because his energy was getting drained by this Fazgoo thing. So the story ends with Chris melting into nothing but Fazgoo and the Fazgoo duplicate uh, handing a biohazard bag of Chris's remains to Dr. Little uh, and saying, he told me everything. So yeah, that's the story, and I'm still scared to this day. It kind of just leaves you with loads of questions that never really get answered. Uh, we've seen before that people have body swapped with metal, they've body swapped with humans. Wait, no, no, robots have body swapped with humans. <laughs> and loads of different concepts are going around the Fazbear Frights universe, but what the hell is Fazgoo? One explanation I did have when the story first released is that Fazgoo is actually a representation or a physical form of remnant. And if you're unsure what remnant is, I think it's best explained by my good friend Inky Ink. I think remnant is almost the glue 
uh, that attaches a soul to a body. So if I had a child's soul and I wanted the child to possess Golden Freddy, for example, I could do so by taking the child's soul uh, and sticking it to the Golden Freddy using uh, the infusion of Remnant, uh, which is essentially some molten metal. I think Fazgu could be very similar. Uh, I think in this story it, it almost taps into Chris's soul uh, and ejects it from his body, uh, causing a whole loss in energy uh, and, a, and of course loss in life. But it sure is a very strange concept and one that I think needs to be explored more in the Fazbear Frights universe. It's clear that all of these kids were replaced with clones of themselves, perhaps a parallel to Afton's plan with Glitchtrap. Um, but why Fazgu and what does it actually mean for the lore? Luckily, we got another story with Fazgu, uh, although it isn't actually called anything in the story. But it does seem to be the same substance. It's it's a pink slimy goo, um, but for some reason people are calling this one Carve Goo, uh, which, which doesn't make that much sense to me. But you know, it's not officially called Fazgu or anything. It was just called Fazgu in that one story because it was in like a mad scientist kit. Anyway, let's quickly go through the puppet carver. So Porter has made this machine called the Puppet Carver, which his angry boss, Jack, hears rumbling from in the night. He looks inside, but he gets locked in, and the general belief is that Jack died while being inside the machine. We then find out that he left the machine, but he's completely different. The old Jack is a horrible person, and this new Jack is pleasant and apologizes to everyone he hurt in the past. The twist in the story, however, is that while he's out to do nice things as a new person, this Fazgu monster with human organs follows him and then reaches out to him while in a corner. Corner. <laughs> Jack then feels all of the pain he's ever dealt to anyone in his life, and then the goo monster disappears. Now a lot of people say that this is uh, the moment when Jack became an actual different person, which is a good theory, but that doesn't really match up with the ending of the story where it's found that the machine contains waste of Fazgu and human organs. So my view on this is that much like in He Told Me Everything, Jack's body was duplicated by Fazgu while his real body was replaced uh, by the goo. I didn't really mention this in He Told Me Everything, but it actually seems that Fazgu makes identical clones of people with one small change they're no longer bad people. We saw how quickly Jack changed from an incredibly horrible person to an incredibly good one. And the story explained that it was because of a near-death experience, but we know better. As for the part where the goo monster follows him, I'm actually not too sure why or how this happened. Uh, I do have one theory, however. Remember how the monster reached out to Jack uh, and, and he felt all of the pain that he had caused to others in an instant, that almost sounds like a property of Agony. We've seen that in particular, Agony is able to take memories and make people suffer from them. My video on what we found actually explains this quite well, uh, but I feel like this has to have something to do with Agony here. Knowing that memories are once again involved in the pain of the story, it, it kind of has to be Agony. So here's sort of my final views on what Fazgu actually is. We've seen in one story that it is almost a parallel to Remnant. We've seen in another story that it seems to have some kind of properties of agony. What if Fazgu is made of agony and Remnant is made of Fazgu? Now this sounds like a bit of a stretch, I know. But I have some kind of feeling that all of these matters, Remnant, Souls, Agony, Fazgu, all of them are connected in some way. Maybe these stories are trying to tell us that Remnant is a molten metal combined with the soul of a person and the agony. Then we have a form, we have a soul that gives the form life, and we have the agony that helps to animate the entire thing. That's currently my take on the madness, uh, but remember that this is all fictional. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's all theoretical and I hope we do get an answer in the future to what Fazgu actually is and how it's connected to things like Remnant and Agony. To finish, I do have a bonus thought for all of you to take away from this video. In He Told Me Everything, the remains of Chris, his organs and the Fazgu were put in a biohazard bag to be thrown away. In the puppet carver, the Fazgu monster found in the machine was in a bag and thrown 
in a dumpster. If any of you theorists recall, uh, in Room for One More, Stanley enters the facility in a scrapyard and it is specifically called out that he passes biohazard bags by the entrance every day and they smell horrible. I'd say it's very possible that these bags could be the remains of children and the reason I make this connection is because the boss in that story is described exactly the same as Dr. Little in He Told Me Everything. Fazgu might be bigger than we first thought it was, um, so tell me your thoughts guys, um, tell me what you think it is, make sure you press the subscribe button and I will see you in another video. Goodbye.